chapter 64 باب ما جاء في الاقسام على الله uh, after this chapter inshallah we continue after salat al isha three more chapters and chapters and that's it inshallah ta'ala chapter 64 to swear and to take oath binding upon Allah al iqsamu ala Allah when a person take an oath binding upon Allah what does that mean uh, it means when a person would Swear saying, you know, something like um, swearing upon Allah, like say, Oh Allah, give me this, or, or something like that. Not swearing by Allah, no, swearing or uh, take an oath binding upon Allah. It is narrated from Jundu ibn Abdullah that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Qala rajulun, Wallahi la Allah li fulan. Faqala Allah ta'ala, Man dhalla a man said by Allah, Allah would not forgive such and such person. So this is what is meant here. A person would say, Wallahi, by Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never forgive such a person. Thereupon Allah the exalted and glorious said, Who is he who swears about me that I would not grant pardon to so and so? I have granted pardon to so and so and blotted out your, meaning the swearer's deeds, rendered his deeds, as a result of this swearing upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he swear binding upon Allah, how can a creation of Allah do that? Uh, unless it's something that is of a good expectations from the righteous people, right? And this is also mentioned in other hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which he said alayhi salatu wa sallam, some people that if they swear by, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant their, what they asked for uh, because of the righteousness. You know, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them victory and they would swear upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, these people, by their righteousness and truthfulness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them what they ask for because of their righteousness and so on. But this is here in the wrong context that a person, as if he is having the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, distributing the forgiveness based on his own yani, will and decisions. Uh, that's why a person should be warned from this because it negates the perfection of the Tawheed. Arrogance can reach the heart of a person that is righteous. Someone that is in Salah and so on and so forth. So he sees people disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would say, Wallahi, these people would never be forgiven. This is what the hadith means. means. This person who said that and he was righteous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all of his deeds in vain. And he would be thrown into the hellfire. And those who said, he said that they would not be forgiven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one is to do such a thing and because it affects the tawheed of the person, of course. And according to another hadith from Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the man who said it was a faithful worshipper. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, تَكَلَّمَ بِكَلِمَةٍ أَوْ بَقَدْ دُنْيَاهُ وَأَخِرَةً Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, his one statement destroyed his life in this world and the hereafter. One statement, that this person was a righteous person. That means what? We have to, you know, uh, make, make sure that we only speak what is right. The early generations of Islam, they, in many of their statements, that is anything that needs to be in prison, it is my tongue, as he would say. Right? Why? Because one word can lead the person to his own destruction. Uh, so a person has to constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and not to, as a result of being righteous or knowing the truth, that everybody else is perished and everybody is in the hellfire. Allah knows best who's going to end his life in a good way uh, and who would end it in a bad way. We know that the believers would enter Jannah, the disbelievers will enter the hellfire, yes, for sure. But who will be believers and who will be guided and so on? A person should humble himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, this is bad mannerism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something that is forbidden that might lead the person which is deficiency in one's tawheed and oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We stop at this point, inshallah ta'ala, and we will finish the last three chapters which are not too long after Salatul Isha. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam,